take your place. In the circle of life. Part of the fun of filmmaking is the innovation and, and pushing things technically and figuring out how to use new tools and then also creating tools that don't exist to help tell a story. We could tilt the ground plane a certain a number of degrees, right? Because it's one thing we could grab. Could we also move Simba's animation and tilt Simba's animation as well? But the buffalo won't. Well, here's the next thing. Why don't we tilt the buffalo too? They may not be cresting properly, but they'll follow the terrain. And now we had available to us a technology that could actually present these characters as if they were real living animals. And for me, that's a challenge, but it's a fun challenge. It's like a puzzle. John and the team, they really pushed the envelope on the Jungle Book, but even the envelope that they're pushing then is very different from what we're doing now. And we've been able to find some ways of making it even better to be able to tell this story. Since we don't have a human character, we're only dealing with animals, and we need to deal with it in a photorealistic way. Well, look at this. Rochelle? What we did on Jungle Book is we had people in their traditional ADR recording sessions, and that was great. But what you find is that they just have their script, and they tend to look down at their script and look back up at the monitor and look down at their script. John came up with this concept of having actors actually interact in a volume. So he called it Black Box Theater, which is essentially a big black room with six reference cameras, people as invisible as possible so that the actors can really feel like they're by themselves and actually engaging. And that way you get winks, looks, distance. You know, we had a hard time in ADR with people not understanding that they need to shout or whisper. It's much easier when you have the people to bounce off of. Start with complete freedom, and if, if I need to make adjustments to limit movement or something, sure. and we'll figure out what's well, we'll do that as we go on. I was trying to pursue an approach that made this film feel less like an animated movie, more like a live action film. And not just a live action film, but a live action film in the way that I'm used to photographing it. <laughs> Did you hear that? The future kid! <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Do it again, yeah, yeah. Oh, guys, everybody, whoa, hold on. I like when there's some naturalism. I like when there's some discovery. I think that spark helps make it feel real. This feels good. Yeah. This is us. Yeah, I like this. This is wonderful. Much better. Especially with the hyenas, we wanted to get their performance together as much as possible. Hyenas and lions have been at war since the beginning of time. But Mufasa's bloodline ends here. I tried to get all my information from the script. So I went through it and I got little hints like Shenzi has a few lines where you can get an idea. Okay, people respect her. She's somebody, people are scared of her. She enters a room and everybody's quiet. John Favreau and I were discussing how the character's gonna work and how you're gonna interact with the other hyenas. And then he started playing back some of the sound that Florence had provided. I'm the queen of the rock. And I'm like, oh, no, I got it. I got it. I'm scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun because then we could also be physical and we could walk around and we can look at each other and you could try out different things. Cool. Especially compared to like kind of regular animation voiceover where you're just standing in front of a microphone. This gives you the freedom to really get it in your body. It's nice to be more physical. You and I are not going down there. Neither of us are going down oh, there. Oh, okay. Okay, neither of us are going down there. Yes. Right? Okay. We both agree okay. that Simba's dead. Well, we can't be for sure. Simba is dead. That's all she ever has to know. Works for me. What's nice about this is the whole process is iterative. So we'll start with script pages and drawings, keyframe art, just for moments of the production. We're still all drawing on, uh, drawing generally, uh, you know, on an interactive tablet with a stylus pen, and that's the way everybody storyboards nowadays. And and it's an all digital workflow for us that goes from digital drawing into the the animatic. That's our limited animation in the animatic, and music and song and dialogue all sort of work together and work in that workflow for us. Once we see that a sequence is working and moving right, then we transition over to building the environments digitally 
and creating them so that we can explore them in virtual reality. There's a big wad of fog or something that's catching in that valley. It's been interesting learning about that. I mean, I think I've always designed digitally, so in a lot of ways it fits perfectly with the way we've been operating up to this point, but I definitely feel like the advances in the technology and VR have brought a whole new tool set that has really expanded our capability. This does feel like the beginning of the journey up in a cool way. I feel like the idea of actually designing the whole world from scratch is definitely for me, the biggest leap. I mean, I'm used to being able to incorporate real location and and our set builds. And so to realize that like it all comes down to us, there will be no location, there will be no location augmentation or anything like that has been new and thrilling, honestly. This is gonna have every asset below the set. So if you say, I need a branch here, he's going to fly under there and get the right. branch and bring it up. So that's like the truck. Yeah. We've got a team of incredible illustrators that are able to render up an idea, a vision of the world really quickly at a high level of resolution. And then it's sort of like going back to building blocks inside the computer where you just rough in the train and then slowly, slowly that keeps shaping and adding elements and dressing. And then beyond that, it's like another infinite pool of detail that needs to be added to it. We're doing this 100 mile radius circle of open vista landscape with grass and trees and rocks. It's actually the most you know, data crunching sort of thing that we could ask the computer to do. So it's been our goal from the beginning that you could fly freely around the savanna from Pride Rock to Rafiki's tree to the watering hole to the elephant graveyard all the way to the cloud forest in continuum. And we have achieved that. The art department has, is building all these different environments and they're building about 100 different species of plants. It's just staggering the amount of detail. Every rock, every pebble, every little weed, you know, they've developed simulations that can grow grass at different heights and, you know, simulate the way the water would erode certain surfaces. It's mind boggling how much detail is needed to create a world that feels real. Welcome to our humble home. I think people of my generation who grew up with video games are very sensitive to photography and shots that look like they're completely digital. And so the trick is, how do you make it look like it was really filmed? And the way shots are designed when they're digital are much more efficiently done. The camera move is designed ahead of time, the cut points, the edit points, the performance, the camera moves. All that stuff is meticulous and perfect, but that perfection leads to a feeling that it's artificial. Nature movies, you're used to seeing it from a distance, but reading so much emotion to it. You don't see a close-up of, of a baby elephant going up to the, the other elephant. You know, you see it from a distance always, and yet it's heartbreaking. So how can we, how can we plug into that? When we thought, how are we going to approach the Lion King? We knew we needed to do something new, completely new. And we had the idea to do this in virtual reality. Take the tools of virtual reality and apply those to filmmaking in a way that's never been done before. We built a video game, the purpose of which is to make a movie. Inside that video game, instead of cars and guns and points being scored, we've got cameras and lights and lions. So we go inside the volume, which is this technology blank space, this space that's filled with grids that hold virtual reality sensors, things that tell the computers where virtual cameras are in space or virtual steady cams, or virtual dollies or virtual cranes. These all look like and feel like real filmmaking equipment, except there's no camera attached. There's just a sensor that says, Hi, I'm a camera, I'm over here, I've got a 50 millimeter lens on, I'm looking downward at 20 degrees, and there's a line. And it's just as if you're playing a video game, except instead of controllers, and we do use controllers at times, we're using tripods, we're using wheels, we're using steady cams. So we're giving the filmmakers all the analog tools that they're accustomed to. Their instincts are reliable. 
but the output is all through this real-time game engine. Yeah, let's just back up the animation. You need to be a hair lower, though. All right. There you go. Let's do it right there. You can't do anything to me, because I'm the future king. So we're doing it the opposite of the way anybody that I know has done it, which is we're putting all of our work into capturing the camera data and making the camera data feel like it's being driven by humans. You inherit all of the idiosyncrasies of, of practical photography. Almost every movie you've ever loved, there's some shot in there that you like that was an accident. That, that is like a great shot. That is like, wow, how'd you come up with that? I wish I knew. The computer eliminates that. The computer just nulls all that out. It's just now single frame. Where do you, do you like this frame? Yeah, okay. And then how about four seconds later, you like that frame? It's like, maybe. Yeah. And then you string it together, and it's like, yeah, it's sort of like a shot, but it's not the same as grabbing a camera and looking through it and then responding to what you're seeing. John, yep. my suggestion is start up a little bit higher and then come down. Okay. Into the, so you see into the into the canyon a little bit. Okay. Three, two, one, go. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I chased him down. <laughs> Seven's up. You know what's great about it is that every shot is different, but is is still really good. VR is actually giving us the experience of being in the set. So basically you put on VR, you go to Africa, you're in Africa and you're on the plains of Africa and you have animated characters that walk through there. And the way you would on a regular movie, you say, well, to see what I want to see, I want to be here. And then if I dolly over here, when they walk over there, I'll be on their faces so I can see them looking out over the, the savannah. And, so you say, okay, let's lay a dolly track from here to there. And then, you know, you, you then take the VR headset off and you go and you have a monitor that is what the camera would see. And you say, okay, let's try this. And, you know, the dolly grip goes with me. And I'll go a little bit faster because I, I missed seeing him turn his head or whatever it is. And then, you, you know, so you're really making it as if you're making a regular movie. So this is all great in the beginning. And I don't, you know, I don't mind losing. It's nice when he starts to sing to be on T-Mod. That's really great. And this is all okay. This is great, because you got both of them. I got through some veggies there. Now here's the problem. Yeah. Because he, this is, this is his solo. So you really want to be around here and get him on this. You know, so you want to be, now you're good. Now you're good. That's fine. Near the village, the peaceful village, the lion sleeps tonight. Those surprises and those accidents that oftentimes, you know, will impose themselves on a movie and make it better than what you imagine. So we're trying to create an imperfect world in which little things can happen that will create the kind of surprise that we're used to in, in live film. Great. Yeah. It's gonna be great. Okay. Okay. Let's let's do that. All right. Slating still. Thirty-two take one is up. Stand by. Okay. We're, we're having to do. Am I both in nav? Uh, they should both be nav controllers. Yes. Okay. It took a couple of days for everybody to get comfortable with virtual reality. And as a matter of fact, it's very disconcerting at first because people get really weirded out by it because their brains kind of panic. You know, some people have nausea when they get into VR for the first time. Your body goes, hang on a second. I'm seeing stuff that makes me think it should be real, but it's not quite doing what I think it should be doing. So maybe there's a problem with me. After a certain amount of time, users' bodies adapt and realize there's not a problem with them, they're okay. So you have to get people over this initial curve, which is the first time they go in, they might get woozy, they might get nauseous, but they build up a tolerance to it and their body just says, ah, we're fine, that's not important, just keep going, it's okay. So the more you use the stuff, the more adapted you become to it. And it's very much like a muscle. Are you it's flying me. or are you static? Over there. I'm flying. This is me. me, who are you? I like to walk around on a location scout in a real environment and say, wow, where's the sun coming? So the sun's gonna be there? That's a, that's a nice background, so we should probably shoot the 
So which side should they be? I guess they come in from here, you know. And so you're talking with other people, and 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 your production designer saying, "I picked this location because I like that background." And the cinematographer will say, "Well, we can shoot. We should shoot this this before lunch. We should shoot this part of the scene, and after lunch, this part of the scene." We have those conversations when you have like five of us in our VR sets scouting, and we're all together. I'm like, "Oh, is this a nice shot, Caleb? Come over here. What do you think of this? Oh, I like this. Oh, but how about that?" So by walking around together, and 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 also with VR, because we're getting used to flying around together, we're finding shots and locations. This is nice up here too. I don't know what this is for, but come up, come up here, guys. See where I am. I'm, I'm zapping everybody. And we are looking back, back towards the desert. Okay. There's a. Yeah, that's nice. Cause there, I like the height. Yeah, I like this. This is great. And even if you go up high and look down at them, there, it's kind of cool. Cause you get that whole valley behind. Are you? Are you? Uh... Where are you? You're you're green. I'm just I'm just up to the right of where the flag is. You're green. Okay. If you're looking back towards the yes. Uh, and would you include the uh, the horizon in, in yeah. our framing too? Part of the most fun to me is is seeing Caleb Deschanel really embracing this set of tools and coming up with shots and techniques and things that I never even thought we'd be doing, and surprising me with these inspired moments while still incorporating all of the elegance in his lighting and framing, which is the reason that I hired him and, and been a fan. If somebody had asked me, you know, five years ago, would you be working on a film at the cutting edge of film technology, I would say, are you crazy? I mean, but I actually find it much more agreeable than I thought from the point of view that it is very similar to what I'm used to doing. I mean, I find myself making the same kind of, you know, decisions in the same way and the same eye towards telling a story. I think I can get away with just this. It's the only thing that I'm bothered by is that this is a little hot here. Yeah. Well, I want to move the, the rock. You want to get the rock out of there? I don't think that rock was there. Yeah, why, don't you, get to, why don't we just lose that rock? Is that and a then, separate then rock? Then everything will be great. I mean, the one thing that's really difficult about this is that because you have the tools to do anything you want. I mean, you can put the sun in one place and we can have, you know, any kind of atmosphere and you can pick this, the skies that you like and everything is that you also want to build in to this the same kind of restrictions that you would have when you made a live movie. We can get you know, times where they cross and then we come into a close up over, over. Yeah. and then the same thing on the other side. Now you have a much further evolved scene before it even gets animated. Having the unevenness sort of play into it, yeah, that's great. Bringing these characters to life in a very believable, realistic way and make people kind of scratch their heads and wonder what they're looking at, that's, that's kind of the most fun of all. In terms of what we're reaching in terms of level of performance and, and level of detail in these characters and, and in terms of skin movement and muscle, you know, it's, it's pushing it all to that next level. Luckily, MPC, who is uh, the, the vendor that's doing all the work for all the characters and, well, basically for every shot in the film, um, they've been a really good partner with us. It's a, it's a bit of a tricky shot because in, in reality, the camera probably wouldn't be traveling. I mean, the camera's not going as fast as the bird, but the bird would probably be traveling a little bit faster. So Zazu would be going quicker here. And then, and if the animals are scrolling by faster, does it, does it somehow break the, he's trying to talk to them. He's saying, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, but have you seen the little guy? You know, if he's flying by them a little quicker, is that gonna bother you? It'll definitely feel more real if I could speed up Zazu. I think this is one of the shots we're gonna show our hand. So whatever we could do to make it feel more like a documentary footage would be better. We get animation approved on a, on a very rudimentary scale, and then it goes to the VR stage for being shot, and then it goes to editorial. They cut it together like live action footage. From there, it goes from kind of a previous animation we're going to final animation. <laughs> and we have different rigs involved. We get into all the details of performance and, and um, nitpicking things, and then there might be slight changes, especially with physics and the way you know these animals move or where they tackle each other, like the cubs. You really get into the details of the weight and the timings and, and how that's going to look. I think you want a rock she can get up on that you could go over to, and then you see all the lions behind her, and they all 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 the lionesses sort of step up, and you could tell that they're they'll follow her and then that roar kind of caps it. So now you've really stacked up all, you've moved all the troops into place. Are you with me, lions? We're trying to build a moment here. The 
collaboration of humans is the most important part of this incredibly technical and technological film. And I think that's often lost, that the people who are most often drawn to technology are people who are first and foremost concerned with pushing the limits of tech. But in our case, we want to use this technology to further humanize the storytelling. You're taking an incredibly antiseptic digital medium and telling one of the most emotional stories that we have in our tradition using these tools. And to, to me, that dichotomy, that underlying tension creates a lot of creative opportunity. And also, it's a high wire act, so there's a sense that we really have to give it our all because this is an experiment. It's a big experiment overall. But I think that that urgency and that sense of that if we do something really cool here, we can be affecting the way make people make movies moving forward is very exciting. Simba, it's so beautiful.